All right, guys, I want to show you how to fill out the unit circle. Now, the first thing you want to do when you guys are filling out the unit circle is do your angles. Now, you can, uh, um, you probably already know how to count around the unit circle with degrees. You can count around the unit circle with uh, 15 degrees all the way around the unit circle, and that's uh, kind of simple. But I really want to look at radians and just work with radians. And so let me draw a makeshift unit circle right here. Um, I want you to notice, the guys, when I draw this, I, I start with the middle angle, the middle angle in the, in the quadrant, and then I, I go uh, one on either side, and then I do one more on either side. So you got to split this area right here into three. This is what it looks like. And then after that, I'm going to count around the unit circle, starting with zero. You always got to start in a three o'clock position. I'm going to count around all the way, all the way around the unit circle using pi over 12. And that's because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 uh, divisions in the one pi, because you guys know that this is one pi. And so uh, this is what it looks like. That's pi over 12, two pi over 12, three pi over 12, four pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 6 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, all the way around the unit circle. And the sucky part about doing it this way is that you're going to have to do a lot of simplifying after you count around all the way around the unit circle with pi over 12. You'll notice that a lot of these fractions can be simplified as they stand. And there's actually some of these, some of these angles we don't even need in the unit circle. So here we go. Uh, the last one should be uh, 24 pi over 12. And then we got... Um, we got pi over six and pi over four. Uh, we don't need this guy. Actually, this guy right here. These are. This would be like the 15 degrees, and this would be 75 degrees if you guys are counting around the unit circle with degrees. We don't use these. We don't. They're. I mean, they're not common angles in the unit circle because they're not in the the special right triangles that that we learn in geometry. Um, but notice uh, the ones that we do need. They do simplify. And so this one, I would divide the top by two, the bottom by two, this is what I get, I get power six. I divide the top by three, divide the bottom by three, I get power four. And this goes all the way around the unit circle. I don't need this guy, okay, I need that guy, don't need that guy, need him, need him, need him, I don't need him, uh, I need this guy. Look, he simplifies the pi, hey, it worked out, that, that's right. So if you know, it, uh, as you simplify, you sh some of these angles should be familiar to you. Um, oops, looks like I have a mistake. Hold on. All right, fix it. I, for some reason, have simplified that one wrong. Don't need that one. We simplify that one um, all the way back to uh, zero, which is two pi. And so there you have it. Everything that you see in blue, those are the angles that you need to know for the unit circle. This is not the best way to do it, but I think it's, it's kind of like the silver bullet way. It always works. All right, now, if you, uh, if you don't like that, you want the simpler way, watch my next one. Okay, my next one, I'm going to actually get a little more straight here on my circle and lines. I'm going to divide it out, and I'm only going to mark the, the angles that I need. And so the first thing I do is I do the biggest angle, the biggest easy angle I know, and that starts at 1 pi. So all the way over here is 1 pi, and then I do one more pi, that would be 2 pi. So this is the biggest easy angle that I can split up this whole unit circle into, which is one pi. The next one is going to be one half pi. So I'm going to put pi over two. This is one half pi, pi over two. Now if I divide this one pi into two sections, this would be pi over two, and the next one would be over here, it would be two pi over two. Uh, but we don't need him. Uh, so 2 pi over 2, we don't need him. And then uh, we would go 3 pi over 2 and then 4 pi over 2, but we don't need that, those guys. So let's get rid of them. The next one I'm going to do is pi over 3. Now, if I divide 1 pi by 3, it, this would be 1, this would be 1, and then that would be 1. That would be three sections. Here, let me draw it out really quick. So there you have it, three pieces of the pi. This one, this one, and this one. And so that would be uh, pi over 3, that would be... Uh, 2 pi over 3, and then we have 3 pi over 3. Okay, but we don't need the 3 pi over 3 uh, because that simplifies down to pi. Now, I'm writing it so you guys can see it, but if I was filling this out by myself, I wouldn't write that guy. Now, the next biggest angle is going to be the one that goes right here, which is pi over 4. 
Um, let me finish counting pi over 3 all the way around. There you go. That's 6 pi over 3, but we don't need him. So now we have pi over 4. That's 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and 4 pi over 4. But we don't need that guy. We don't need that guy up there. Then we have 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4. We don't need him. 7 pi over 4, but we don't need him. Oh, no. We do need him. We don't need that guy. So you see th four sections right there. If you guys were to split up the unit circle uh, in, the, in the four sections, the top part, that's um that's where you see pi over four two pi over four three pi over four and then four pi over four because there's four sections one two three four all right let's finish this guy the last one we're going to do is pi over six that's going to be pi over six so you see we can split it up into six sections and so this would be uh pi over six and two pi over six three pi over six four pi over six five pi over six whoops looks like i made another mistake there you go, 5 power 6, 6 power 6, 7 power 6, 8 power 6, 9 power 6. Now, all the, all the angles that I would be able to simplify, we don't need. We don't need 2 power 6, we don't need 3 power 6, or 4 power 6. We already have angles for those. So I'm going to get rid of those ones, and then boom, you're done. These are all the angles that you guys need to know for the unit circle. Uh, is is the more you do it the easier it'll get to now after doing the angles you guys need the coordinates for each of these uh, now if you know the coordinates for the first quadrant you can easily fill in the coordinates for all the other ones because of uh, reference angles so all the numbers that you need to know to fill out the coordinates for the unit circle are right here zero one half rad two over two uh, uh, rad 3 over 3 and then 1 or square root whatever however you want to say it so these th uh, five numbers are going to be used to fill out all the coordinates around the unit circle and look they're listed in order from least to greatest that's very important and in fact you if you really wanted to be really consistent you could even put a square root sign over over the the one but that's kind of redundant the square root of one is one but then look now they're all they all have square roots except for the zero and the one every fraction has a square root so uh this is how you do it now let me draw my first quadrant okay uh i'm going to do the x numbers first so if you want to do the x numbers first let's start right here and we're going to put the smallest or the biggest number first and so it goes one and then rad, two, rad 3 over 2, rad 2 over 2, 1 half, and then 0. So we just went backwards like that. And the reason why this one is 1 is because the co height right here is the longest. And as you see, as you can see, when we go to each measurement right here from the, the vertical midline, this point right here has the longest. Uh, number the greatest distance and so that's why the biggest number goes there then it goes rad 3 over 2 rad 2 over 2 1 half and 0 now uh, let's do a different one for um, sine which is the vertical height so here are all my angles let's do the vertical height our longest vertical height is going to be at pi over 2 so let's draw that distance right there and so that's where the one's going to go and then as we go down uh, we keep getting shorter and shorter so this is one this is rad 3 over 2 then we have um, red 2 over 2 and then 1 half and 0 now I counted down you guys can count up if you want to if you want to start here and count least to greatest that's fine it doesn't matter just as long as you know the order here it makes it a lot easier to fill out the rest of the unit circle uh, you just have to put uh, these y values over here and then you have your first quadrant now every other quadrant is gonna pretty much use the same numbers except one of them is going to change or two of them are going to change to negative depending on which quadrant you're in the second quadrant right here all these x values will be negative the y values will stay positive in the third quadrant both x values and y values will be negative and then in the fourth quadrant only the y negatives will turn negative uh, the x values will stay positive but i'm sure you guys knew that and here's a picture of a completed unit circle looks pretty you guys can find really cool color colored ones online uh, but uh, the only thing different that I haven't talked about yet in this video at least is uh, which trig functions are positive in each quadrant and which fun uh, trig functions are negative in each quadrant all of them are positive in this quadrant only sine and his cousin cosecant are po positive in this quadrant 
And this quadrant right here, quadrant three, tangent and his cousin, cotangent, are positive in this quadrant. And then the last quadrant, cosine is positive and his cousin secant. Now it makes a lot of sense when you think about which one is x, which one is y. Now we know that the x values all the way around the unit circle represent cosine. So that's why the first quadrant and the uh, fourth quadrant would have a positive cosine. For sine, we know that the y values are si represent sine for each angle. That means uh, the first quadrant and the second quadrant are going to be positive for sine. So that's why sine is positive in each of those. Uh, tangent is positive in the first quadrant, and it is positive in the third quadrant. That's because when we divide y and x, which is how you get so uh, tangent, um, that uh, they have the same signs. So anyways, uh, good luck, guys.